Okay, I think there should be about 18 people. There are some of you I don't recognize, but let's just go through roles so you know everybody else's name. You probably all know each other, but I'm going to read off names so that you hear people's names and see them say hi. So, Connor Anderson. Hello. Hello. There we go. Berserk. <laughs> Didn't think Berserk was here yet. Yes, okay. Connor. Connor Bell. Don't see you yet. Barrett. Barrett Deming. Yes. J.D. Hoglin. Dalton. Who's? Okay. Check. Luke Lastly, Hunter Lewis, Jack Liu, John McAvee, or is it McAvee? McAvee, okay. Should have known that last one. My Win, go, Rebecca Perez, Mitchell Sharp, Jack. Ian Shrum. Not yet. Eli, sorry. Deanna Thornton, check. Brian Urban, check. Mark Woodard, check. Okay, so that's who's here, and you know who to shame to make sure they show up next time on time. Cool. So, this is 490, new course on interactive game development. This is the first time I've taught this course, I've learned some of these tools. I know some things about the subject. I will be learning along with you sometimes this semester, but it will be a, a, a course where we learn things together, and I will guide you. I have exercises. I have things I want us to do, places I want us to go with this course. So this will be a course we build together. So be, be ready to participate and jump in and say, hey, I learned something new. Share it with the rest of the class. Teach us something that, that we just don't know so we can all be better game developers and game designers. Okay, quick walk through the syllabus. I'm having office hours Monday, Wednesday, Friday from 1 to 2, Thursday from 12 to 1. Stop by. I'm going to try to have some online office hours where I open up a Google Hangout. And you can stop by, share your screen with me. We can have a conversation. And those right now are scheduled from 4 to 5 in the evening. I might make them 7 o'clock, something that's more convenient for you when you're like, hey, I'm finished eating. Let's time, time to code, time to do something. So I'll try to work those out, but I'll probably be at home on my computer with those. Because one thing that's going to happen this semester is my wife and I are expecting our first child next week. So, yay! That's going to that's gonna cause some problems for your schedule. So, next week we have a lab I'm going to assign today that you're going to be working through, but there will be no class next week. And then after that, We'll be having class as normal. I might be a little sleep deprived, and I'm going to probably be 
at home sometimes when I'm trying to have online office hours because I won't be in the office all the time that I was last semester. So that should hopefully balance things out and keep me available to you. And you can always email me and ask me questions about what's going on. Okay, you are here. You're Ian? Yes. Yes, check. Okay, Ian Shrum. Check. So quickly, let's go through this syllabus. If you haven't had a course with me before, I keep my courses at mark.goodrich.com under the courses, and you can click on interactive game development right there. This is our syllabus. There are no required textbooks. Again, number one, this is the first time I'm teaching this course. I don't want to require you to buy a $50 textbook and then not use it. I would feel really bad about that because the course changes in the middle and we're like, we don't need to do that. We need to do this. So they are not required, but they are suggested. They're where I'm going to draw some things, resources, so that I can make lectures and put things together in a sensible way. They are these three textbooks. I have older editions of some of them, but Game Design Workshop, this is a nice book about game design, how to think about making a game, what it means to make a game. Unity game development in 24 hours. We're going to spend a little bit more time than that on Unity. And, and, some, and the thing about textbooks about software, they're pretty much worthless as soon as they get printed. Because the next version of the software comes out. This is about version, I think, 4.1 and 4.2. It's on 4.6, and sometime in the next month, 5.0 will come out and probably change everything. So this is a good book to say, this is how Unity used to work. <laughs> and, and that's going to be probably the best we could do, but it has some good exercises, some good ways of structuring things. I'm going to use this. You might want to pick it up. You might want to rent it. You might want to convince your friend to buy it. It's up to you. So the third one is Artificial Intelligence for Games. We're going to focus on this a bit in this course. I like artificial intelligence. I like the ways that games can help you explore artificial intelligence. So this is older version of the book. Characters get more animated in later editions. So those are your possible textbooks. And if you want to spend a bunch of money and you're like, I have tons of scholarship money to go buy textbooks, go do that. But you don't have to. They're not required. There won't be readings from them. Okay. Overview for the course. We're going to learn how to build interactive games. There's a lot of different topics that might come up, depending on what we get time to and what your focus and interest is but I just listed tons of things about interactive games that might be appealing to you. You should have data structures as a prerequisite. You need to know how to code in objects. And think about the world in objects. If you've got that, I think we can make a lot of progress this semester. Learning objectives. Again, first time I'm teaching this course. I need you to help me figure out some learning objectives. I have things in my head, but what are the things that you want to learn? So over the semester, We'll be building up learning objectives to say, yes, we learned that. We did that. That was an objective. It's a little bit retroactive, retconning it here a bit, but we're going to make learning objectives work for us. So disabilities, academic honor, those are good things to have in a syllabus. Extensions. Extensions are rarely given. Get your stuff done on time. I'll try to make sure you have enough time to get things done. If you need an extension, let me know. If you're traveling for other academic activities or athletic activities or singing activities, those kind of things we can work out. Okay. 30% of your grade in this class will be based on labs. Let me make sure that number is correct. 40% of your grade. Because <laughs> I changed this just this morning. So 40% of your grade is based on labs. There will be a lot of labs that we go through in the class, and they are going to be where you get to use the tools, where you practice the tools, that we're going to learn the tools together, and then you go do something interesting with this tool. That's going to be our labs. And so that's going to be 40% of your final grade. There will be two presentations that you're going to give to the rest of the class. First one is going to be a quick three-minute presentation following the Pakachika kind of presentations. Has anybody heard of those type of presentations before? Oh, it's going to be so much fun. Okay, <laughs> so we're going to learn how to do those presentations in a three-minute presentation. It's a different kind of style. We'll talk about that when it starts to come up. It's probably going to be in about a month or so that you do that presentation. The second one, you're going to be giving a 15-minute presentation to the rest of the class about some tool 
that we haven't learned about, some tool that a game designer and a game developer might use to make their game better. Like I want to make a sprite. Here's a great tool for making sprites. I want to do some 3D animation. I want to make a map. I want to make terrain. People have built other programs, so you're going to learn that tool, come up with a 15-minute demonstration of it for the rest of us, and come up with a small assignment for the rest of the class to say, if you work through these five steps, you will have used this tool and understand how things work. Okay, so those are going to be presentations. Those are going to be worth 20% of your grade. Okay, there will be a large project. Near the end of the semester, there's something coming up in April called Ludo Dare. It's an online game design, game creation competition. It takes place over a weekend, and it's anybody can jump in and participate. You will have 72 hours to make a game. The way these game jams and game competitions work, there's a theme that is announced, and people say, make a game about this. It's a very broad, very general theme. And then you're on Teams, you start making your game, and then 72 hours later, you post your game for other people to play to give you critical feedback. That's going to happen near the end of the semester. I can't really change this. This is an international competition. But that's the plan for that weekend to participate in that competition. You will be on Teams with other people, and you'll be working together to create that game. After that, we still have two more weeks of class and then finals. So we'll be working through the steps that really turn that 72 hours of work into a polished game. Doing play testing with people, doing analysis, revising, fixing all the bugs that you couldn't get fixed in 72 hours. That's the next portion of it. And then the final exam time will be the presentation, the, the selling of that game to the rest of the class, getting people interested to say, this is the coolest game ever. That's the, that's the final part. And that will be 35% of your grade. Okay, any questions about the course setup? And if you already have plans for that weekend, please let me know as soon as possible. Try to mark that off on your calendar right now. Because that will, I will make room in the rest of our semester because of that 72 hour chunk of time over the weekend. We'll take a day off somewhere in the middle of the semester to say, don't come to class, there's not going to be stuff that day. But that is an important weekend. And I'm hoping that this really works, that everybody can budget that time. It's going to be a really cool thing. There's going to be thousands and thousands of people across the world making games that weekend that you can watch them make games, they can watch you make games, and demo each other's games. I think it's, it's a wonderful time to have it at the end of that semester. Okay, any questions so far? Great, so we need to figure out what is a game. We're here in interactive game development, Let's take some time to think about what is a game. And as we do this, we're going to try to be making a mind map of the ideas that we have. This is on a website called mindmuck.com. Maybe you'll find it useful for making mind maps and just organizing, brainstorming content. So, what is a game? Interactive. Yeah. Interactive. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Let me see. Where did there? There they are. Okay, add a child, interactive. Other ideas, yeah, is there? The creation is primary purpose is fine. What is it? The creation is primary purpose is fine. Okay, purpose is fun. What else? Let's just throw a lot of ideas up there. What is a game? Mitchell. There's some kind of goal. Goals are involved in games, yes. Not that one. Ugh. What is a game? This is my first time really using this live with other people, so we'll see how the software goes. <laughs> but this, they should have a goal. What else? Rebecca. So has rules. Rules. There's rules.